Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Welcome again to Celebrating Act 2, where Art and I are with Dr. Liz Lister. Dr. Liz, it's always great to see you. Thank you. Likewise. Yeah, yeah I have a, a question. Uh, the last couple of years, uh, we've spoken off and on about uh, COVID. Uh, we never did have a general conversation about pandemics and why some of these things that we're seeing now are seem to be more frequent. They probably aren't. But uh, every so often we we hear of uh, once once the COVID is somewhat behind us or and someday it'll be a good deal behind us. Um, uh, but something always new on the scene, like now it, uh, monkeypox seems to be the, uh, if not pandemic, the uh, illness du jour. Mm, uh, yeah. can, can you talk a little bit about, um, uh, and we know that pox is like when we were kids uh, growing up, and I think even my oldest kids all got smallpox vaccinations, which I don't think they uh, uh, give anymore. Uh, it's not required to go to school. So is, is monkeypox A, anything like smallpox uh, and us old folks, are we protected against it? But why is there like a new thing all the time? And what is monkeypox all about and how do we protect ourselves? I know that that's, that's a lot that I just threw at you, but maybe can you help us out? <laughs> yes, absolutely. It is to your point, it's sort of the new in the news virus. As you said, these viruses, this particular virus has been around for tens of thousands of years, actually. Uh, and it was first discovered in 1958, to check the date there, in a lab of research monkeys. And that is why it was named uh, monkeypox. This was actually in Copenhagen, not in Africa. It's becoming known right now as an outbreak that they think originated in people that were in uh, Nigeria, Central Africa. However, that's not where it was first identified. The first human case was in 1970. Hmm. And so, and it's been known about all ever since then. The What seems to be different now is that the this virus, which is what they call endemic, right? We, we all know the word pandemic now all around the world. Endemic is where it's common within a particular country. It is endemic in Nigeria, Central Africa, as I was saying. So they've been dealing with it for decades. What's changed is an outbreak outside of Africa affecting Europeans, affecting white people. So the politics of illness and disease, we've all, all unfortunately learned a lot about the politics of illness and access to health care, and that definitely varies around the world. So this is not, it, it's a concerning outbreak, uh, but it's, and it's being followed, but it, this is not a new disease. Okay, and there, so, are, there are, so there are treatments for this, and there are vaccines. Uh, it's just that it hasn't been top of mind. So uh, now, it, now it's a panic because it's in America, that kind of thing. Exactly, exactly. The panic because it was in Europe, and it, it is similar to other animal pox viruses. So not so much the chicken pox that we get as humans that's pretty benign, although it has a lot in common. It's, it's from the larger pox virus family, and so it's got the similar symptoms, a fever, rash, uh, swollen glands. It's It's got a lot in common with that. So it Unfortunately, what the deaths that we're hearing about are so far mostly in people with weakened immune systems for, um, for various reasons. So like everything else, if we have a good immune system, uh, we'll be affected by it a lot less. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, also and this is not the same kind of deadly disease as uh, COVID has been, which was respiratory and people basically would lose the ability to to, to breathe and to uh, respirate until we had some cures for it. But mon monkeypox is, is it just more annoying if you get it than deadly? What, we what should we expect if we or somebody we know get it? Well, okay. So first of all, it's not that easy to get. You do have to be in direct close contact with someone who has it. 
This is not like COVID where people were in the same room together and shared the virus. Also, as you just mentioned, uh, as we know, COVID had, a, especially originally, the, the strains are calming down now, but originally it had a real affinity for the lungs and that's what made it so dangerous initially. Whereas uh, this virus, which I'm calling it a pox virus, it's about to be renamed. Uh, Monkey pox is not really that good of a name for it. So there will be a new name for it coming, which will be more, more scientific. Okay, uh, so it's not easy to get. When you do get it, you do need to rest. You, it, the smallpox virus, interestingly, has some overlap and there are vaccinations uh, that do lower the risk. Which brings us back to why it's more common in Africa where they have less access to vaccination programs. Now okay. I've seen I've seen some pictures of monkey pox and if I'm remember them correctly, it looks like terrible boils right. uh, on the body. Yeah, it, it's, a pretty, that, it's a pretty serious rash. Yes. And but uh, don't forget, John, that when you're gonna see these kind of pictures, it's always gonna be like the worst case scenarios. Right. They're not gonna show you a mild rash. You won't see you'll say what? I don't see it. Okay. Of course. Of course. So, I, I've, I saw those pictures. They're, some of them are really alarming, uh, but those are the extremes. Mm -hmm. Well, that, and that's the case with anything new. It, it sounds like we really shouldn't be alarmed. It's something we should know about, something we should be cautious about, but it sounds like it's still pretty rare in the United States. That is correct. It is very rare. There's only been, I mean, I'm going to say only, uh, I mean, it's a significant issue worldwide. There's been just over 2,000 cases total. Wow. So That's... again, not we're not talking about millions and millions of cases right. as with other viruses, uh, but it's being studied and it, we have a, there's a lot of knowledge in Africa among African scientists. They've been studying this disease for many decades, so we'll be able to learn from them. It, I do want to put in the one statistic that it has about a 4% fatality rate and that's what we were seeing at the very beginning with COVID. Mm. Okay, so that is that's a pretty high percentage, but it is a low frequency uh, viral illness, at least right now, uh, in most parts of the world, including in the US. It's not a serious immediate threat, but it is something that has to be looked at. Sure. Okay, so if somebody, if somebody has it or suspects they have it, or a loved one has it, uh, uh, what should they do? How treatable is it? How curable? uh kind of time this is not a death sentence as Correct. in the early days of covid you had covid you were worried are they going to survive the first couple of weeks this so this is treatable but what should people expect and how curable is it that people can get back to a normal life pretty quickly well it is a viral illness it has to run its course and again depending on the the host the person who gets the virus depending, depending on their uh immune system and immune strength that is how long it will last but it is a viral illness it has to just be allowed to run its course it's not a, it, and it varies it varies uh, among individuals based on their immune function yeah well it's good to know about these things even though this may not be uh, a big threat right now that's right that's right it, and it is not as mild it is more uh, of an illness, you do feel sicker than just with chicken pox. Uh, and, and again, it's still the close contact required. I forget if I've told us the story where I, there was chicken pox in my neighborhood when I was little and I got the chicken pox. It was a very mild illness. And my mother sent my brother to go play. She's a pediatrician and she sent him to go play with the same kids. And then he got really, really sick, high mm. fevers. The rash was worse. So it's, and that was in the same household. So so there you go. It, it really does vary. The yeah. vast majority of people who get it are not going to, it's not going to be fatal. Uh, so it's an important health concern, but not nothing compared to what we've all been through. Um, so uh, one, one last question, and that is if I suspect I have it, because it sounds like the symptoms are very similar to a lot of other things. If I suspect I have it, um, and I go to my doctor or, or a, a urgent care or something like that, will they be able to recognize it? 
That's a wonderful question. That's the purpose of the health alerts is for doctors to be able to recognize these kinds of things. The biggest question will be any recent travel, travel uh -huh. from Europe, travel from the African countries. That'll be really the biggest question. They, they will look for a contact mm. in addition to the, the signature rash, because other than that, it's kind of nonspecific, the fever, the swollen glands, a lot of illnesses have that. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. This is great information. Maybe not crucial information at this point, but good, good to have. Yes, and it's crucial for people to not panic. Uh, it's not another pandemic that's imminent. Uh, it's it's not like that. Okay. okay. By the way, we we can count on Dr. Liz when there is something to panic about. We'll have you back. Okay. When uh, uh, people uh, you know have like uh, play doh when there's a play doh outbreak. Uh, or something like that. We'll bring you back when there is something to panic about. But I mean, really, uh, there are dozens of uh, lesser known, but been around for a long time, That's diseases right. that people get all the time. You don't hear about it because the numbers don't swell to pandemic or even these That's endemic right. large numbers. Uh, but there always will be. We'll never hear about most of them. And hopefully, um, a monkeypox, which just has, I guess, a great PR agent, um, is uh, top of mind now. And uh, thank you for helping ease our minds a bit about what it is, what it isn't, and that it's treatable. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.